Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, I've been looking forward to this for quite some time, uh, and it looks like um, uh, quite a lot of very interesting things have been happening today. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, diversity, gender diversity, particularly about tech, but also commercially as well uh, in, in business. I've been asked to tell you a little bit about myself first. I was born in the first city of Dublin, uh, at the time when Ireland was still actually economically a third world country, which wasn't that long ago actually. Um, uh, and uh, at the age of 18, uh, I left uh, being one of 48,000 that year. Ireland has a history of emigration, uh, and I came over to this great country. Um, I came to this building, it didn't look like that when I came, that's a Whittington Hospital uh, up in North London on Highgate Hill, and I trained to be a, a nurse. Uh, I was destined to be a nurse. My dad had worked in hospitals all his life, and uh, on a Sunday morning, if he'd go in to do the time cards of the, the porters that he looked after, I'd go in and I'd start rooting around the lecture theatres, looking at samples and, and whatnot, and I was always quite fascinated. Um, so I started there in 1989, and, uh, and I qualified. And I worked uh, within uh, nursing for probably eight or nine years, uh, within the NHS, within the private sector, uh, and I also worked in the film industry as a nurse for a while as well, which sounds very fascinating, but it was incredibly boring. I put on loads of weight and uh, I sat around all day. Um, uh, and I decided uh, I didn't really want to make a, a living uh, nursing anymore, so I decided to uh, go back to school. And I went to the University of Brighton, left London, uh, and I went to live in uh, Brighton for four years, which is a great experience. I thoroughly recommend going back to university as a mature student. It's awesome. Okay, um, uh, I spent a lot of time studying. <laughs> uh, uh, very, that, that building there on the bottom right-hand corner of the library, and I spent many, many hours there in my final year. So that was the beginning of a, a transition and a change in my career direction, uh, and I started going into uh, um, project management mainly and in technology. So I worked in some startups and I worked in an insurance company, and in 2007 uh, I started working for Ticketmaster, well actually Live Nation, Live Nation Entertainment, which was our umbrella company. So I worked in the uh, uh, concerts uh, division in the digital department, and in 2010 Live Nation and Ticketmaster merged and I became a Ticketmaster guy. Ticketmaster is the biggest uh, ticketing agent in the world, by far, uh, and basically what we do is we sell tickets on behalf of concert promoters, uh, venues, theatres, we sell tickets for sports events uh, and what have you, and we do all of that using technology. We're very much a technology uh, company. So that's just a little bit of me, but why, why am I here and why am I speaking to you about diversity? Um, well, basically, it comes down to me a matter of equality and, and inequality. I remember growing up as a kid, my parents trying to explain to me uh, the, uh, the, um, the, uh, all kinds of various historical... My dad used to love history, so he used to t uh, talk to me about all kinds of historical events, and uh, um, especially about Martin Luther King and all the movement, that, and, and apartheid was very much in the news when I was growing up uh, in the 80s. And I could never really understand it. I just didn't get it. It just didn't sit. How could that be happening in the world today? And uh, I found a, a, a quote by a, a small uh, action group in Kenya, which uh, goes pretty well uh, to describe uh, what I think or, or what inequality means in a, in a social and uh, an economic sense. Uh, it's that gender inequality is an affront to human dignity. It's a challenge to the rule of law and an obstacle to development. Denying women of their rightful place in society by depriving them of equal access to education, justice or livelihood means robbing societies of the talent and potential of half of their members. In securing every social need from peace to food, the road of women has shown to be paramount. Uh, that really stuck with me because I think inequality is an affront uh, to humanity. Um, so that's my basis um, and uh, I see more and more of that uh, but it affects me more and more in the job I do, and I'll, I'll talk to you about that, that now. But before I talk about women in STEM and women in, in tech areas, let's talk about women in business generally, okay? Now, we could have a whole separate conference about all the data that exists around gender diversity uh, in business, okay? There's tons of research out there, all right? And I'm just going to give you a few little snippets. 
Okay? Publicly traded companies with male-only executive directors missed out on about 430, pound of invest 430 billion of investment returns in 2014 in the UK. Okay? Um, that's a big loss. Okay? Um, on average, companies with the highest percentages of women board directors outperformed those uh, by at least 53% on return on uh, equity, 42% on return on sales, and 66% on return of invested capital. So the numbers are quite clear, and the data is quite clear. A fascinating report by McKinsey uh, last year, it was a global report, very comprehensive report, stated that enabling women to meet their full potential in work could add as much as 28 trillion to the global economy by 2025. That's best case. Worst case is around 12 trillion. 28 trillion is bigger than the combined GDP of the US and uh, of China. That's massive global potential that we are quite simply missing out on. So economically, inequality does not make sense. But what about tech then? Well, the UK has the lowest percentage of female engineering professionals in Europe. And that's just engineering in general. This could be software engineering, it could be you know, uh, construction engineering. I'd, I'd, I could tell you that the numbers in software engineering are even worse, okay? And that's the area uh, that I uh, uh, am involved in. But women drive 70 to 80% of consumer uh, uh, purchasing through a combination of their buying power and influence. And that's important. It's not just their buying power, it's their influence within the home in buying. Women make most of the decisions in the workplace of what will be bought, okay? Consider that against the background where I struggle to find female software engineers. As was mentioned in the introduction, one of the things I did at Ticketmaster International was I set up the Project Management Office, uh, the International Project Management Office, uh, which was great fun. I didn't realise how much fun it was until I'd finished. Uh, the diversity mix was there, there was quite good. It was about 54% male. And setting that up from scratch, covering all of those territories, uh, I worked with my team. The debate was fun. It was balanced. Uh, the decisions we made were balanced. Um, what processes and procedures we decided to implement uh, um, was all very balanced, okay? Uh, and in November 2013, I took over at the software engineering department, which is about 170 engineers, and most of them were blokes. Only 18% were women uh, across the whole of international in those five different countries, and of those 18%, um, most of them weren't software engineers. There's only a handful of software engineers. I could probably count them on one hand. Okay, and I didn't realise what I had with setting up the PMO until I'd finished, you see, because trying to make the changes that I was trying to make within software engineering, which were considerable, was harder. Okay, I was finding the traction was, it was hard to get some traction with making the changes. The resistance was a bit higher and I was getting a bit more frustrated. And I realized it was because there was far too much testosterone washing around the decks, okay? I didn't have that balance that I'd enjoyed and didn't realize I had while I was setting up the PMO. And that really set me on the, uh, uh, on the path of trying to address this issue of why uh, um, diversity, certainly in technology, is, is a problem. And I'm still asking why, and there are many, many answers. So what are we doing about it at Ticketmaster? Well, uh, Ticketmaster is the sixth biggest e-commerce website in the world. Okay, we get about 10 million visitors every single month. We have about 60 million people on a database globally. Uh, and we have very peak demands. Um, but if you bear that in mind against what I just said a few minutes ago, where most of the buying power, most of the people who buy are influence, buying are women, but most of the people who build these websites are men. So, are we missing out on a trick here? I believe we're missing out on a trick, and we're not alone. All companies now, very few companies nowadays, are not tech companies. We're a tech company. Car manufacturers are tech companies. Companies that make bread are becoming tech companies, okay? Yet they struggle a lot to find women to fill these positions. That's problematic. So I'm on a mission to do something about it. And if I'm not gonna do something to change, certainly, the diversity mix that we have at Ticketmaster now, I want to make sure that we're doing something for the people who takes over my job 
and takes over their job into the future. We are desperately trying to get a much better mix in our software engineering department uh, to ensure uh, that we get that balance that I've enjoyed previously. Now that's not a stock photo, that's a real photo taken yesterday of two people doing a code review. Okay? Um, uh, uh, looking at what we're building and making sure we're building it for the audience in which we serve. That's Christine, and Christine leads, she's a leader of the UX team, the, the user experience team, and everything on that wall, all those stickies and all that kind of stuff and those notes, is a process, the very, very creative process. Not techie, eating pizzas, late into the night process. Developing technology is not like that anymore. It's very creative. Um, it's very interesting working with all these software engineers, I must say, it's been interesting for me. Um, they're a very creative bunch with a very creative temperament. Um, but Christine uh, does a really good job uh, working with her team uh, in going through this, this whole process. What you see on the wall there is probably our, our resale buy flow, so it's the process you go through of buying resale tickets here. Um, so it's very important for us that we put female leaders in position to be good role models to other young girls coming through, be it Generation Y or Millennials coming through. We've done a complete rehash of how we do talent management, tech talent management. Uh, I think all companies now, that are tech companies, need to be looking at how they gain and retain tech talent, and especially female tech talent, okay? Um, you could probably just make it out at the end there. These are all our new uh, job descriptions, and what we're aiming to do at our, all, at all our job descriptions is have the sentence which clearly says, if you are a woman reading this, we want to hear from you, okay? We're being very explicit about it. We want to hear from you. Um, we're doing mentorship programs, so we're working with uh, Code Bar and Code First for Girls, where we host events at our Ticketmaster offices to give opportunities for uh, these young people to come through and meet software engineers to actually get into the industry. And what I'm trying to do now is have a couple of desks free where we have people coming through and we mentor them every few weeks so we can actually get more people exposed to industry and give them more opportunity. We, oh, we do uh, unconscious bias training. Uh, we're very lucky at uh, Ticketmaster and Live Nation Entertainment because we are investing from the highest level, from the CEO, we're investing in diversity and we now have a, di a diversity department. And Genevieve is here, she's part of the international department and they're looking at um, unconscious bias training. Uh, I don't know whether anyone saw this fascinating programme on the telly recently on BBC. Uh, a, a guy called Professor David Eagleman was doing a pro five or six part series about the brain. It was absolutely fascinating. We think that we have control over so many decisions we make. We totally don't, okay? We really don't have, because of a lot of stuff which is pre-programmed in, which actually influence how we think and the decisions we make. And we think we're on top of it, we're not. Unconscious bias training is very important. We've set up a, 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 a meetup, a group, which is called Achieving Diversity in Technology. Our first meetup is tonight. It's in our offices. There'll be beer, pizza and popcorn, where we'll be showing uh, a, a movie. We've got a, a license to show this movie, which was made about uh, women in tech. Uh, and we're inviting people from the outside to come in and join. And we want speakers every month to come and share their experiences of achieving diversity in tech, so we can spread the word and spread some of the things that are happening to be able to uh, achieve this. We're looking for speakers. And, and uh, oh, gone again. And then uh, we set up, uh, uh, there's some other groups being set up. This is Women uh, in Entertainment, uh, We Nation, which is a, a group within the organisation looking at the same types of issues of uh, women and diversity uh, uh, within, uh, within the organisation. We don't do too bad at Live Nation Entertainment uh, as a global company. Globally, uh, the majority of our staff are women. I think it's about 56% or something like that uh, as Live Nation Entertainment uh, at, uh, at non-management level. At director level, it's probably about 37 38%. So we don't do too bad, uh, but uh, of course you can always do better. So what else can we do? And what else can you do? This, this conference is all about action. So I, ta I thought I'd end with a few action points. Um, we haven't done all of these. We're going to strive to do all of them, but maybe in your organisations you can do some of this too. Measure. I love data. It's fantastic. It helps drive good decisions. Measure remuneration, benefits, retention and promotion dynamics. What's happening in your company? What's the data telling you? Act on it. 
monitor recruitment, and retention KPIs, practices, and increase the flexibility within the workplace. We really need to start thinking outside the box in terms of what was traditional uh, and what was traditional working environments in tech companies. Why not have environments where women can drop the kids off at school, come in and do some work, go back and pick them up, bring them home, give them their tea, put them to, dead, put them to bed, and then maybe pick up the rest of the work in the evening? Why not do that? And I think all tech companies need to start thinking more flexibly in those terms. Make sure that the voice is shared, okay, at conferences, internal events, uh, and even meetings. If you're a leader within an organization, observe who's saying how much, and is there enough women saying enough things at the right levels? And if not, what are you going to do about it? We need more role models. This is one of the key things which uh, the research is showing again and again. There's not enough female role models within, certainly in the tech industry. So uh, make sure that you put women at the foreground of the company, both internally, like I say, at conferences, uh, in leadership positions, and externally, how the rest of the world see you as an organization. Education. Ensure women have the opportunity to gain the skills in public speaking, negotiation, and leadership traditionally the things that they don't necessarily feel they can do or, importantly, have had the opportunity to do. And language. Focus on the 50-50 notion, uh, language, as if it's already in place. Start talking about it as if it's in place, and it's amazing. When you start talking about things, it spreads, okay? You know it's working when people say back to you what you said some time ago as if it's their idea, okay? Uh, and increase awareness. You can only fix what you're aware of. So make people aware through some of the training I've talked about and make sure it's a talking point. This is all very important. For commercial reasons, it's very important. But I also think for equality and humanitarian reasons, uh, it's very important. Um, uh, find people like, apparently, I'm a man ambassador, I'm told. <laughs> OK, so you need to find more people to make sure it's everyone's issue and not a, a man's issue. I keep saying to the women's groups that I'm invited to talk to, which are mostly women talking to women, stop talking to the converted. You need to get more men in your groups to make them successful. This is all very important for, the, for commercially, as I say, and for humanitarian reasons. I can't really say it better than this. It's important for the future, and it's important that this momentum that we've picked up continues uh, and becomes a real movement, and we start seeing a change into the future. Thank you. And we're hiring.